Alrighty, so it's time to talk about the Dark Universe. And for those of you out there that don't even know what that is, which I estimate is 95% of you, the Dark Universe was to be a connected series of movies that pulled from Universal's menagerie of monsters. Dracula, the Wolf and or Invisible Man, and most famously, the Mummy! No, not, not that Mummy of all our younger Halcyon days, but this one. Aww. Yeah. And while this 2017 Tom Cruise-helmed summer tent pole that held up precisely zero tents is obviously going to be our main subject for the day, it is just one of the aspects of this story. Because, mystifyingly, the Dark Universe was simultaneously one of the biggest but also smallest failures in recent Hollywood history, as not a whole lot of money was actually spent on this massive tapestry of interconnected monster mashing. But the sheer public humiliation of its collapse might have been worse. Nah, it, it probably actually wasn't worse. Anyway, grab your parachute and start screaming into the silence. Because it's time to delve deep into what happened with the Dark Universe. What if I told you we were putting a team together? We. Hey, do you remember this moment? The one that kicked off the most successful ongoing movie saga of all time? Yeah, every studio in Hollywood remembers it, but none more vividly or bitterly than Universal Pictures. The reasons for this are twofold. One, they were actually on the ground floor of the MCU, financing the Hulk films. And two, they were technically the first studio who had attempted a grander cinematic universe some 70 years prior. Once they hit it big with Dracula in 1931, they then produced Frankenstein, the Wolfman, and then just started smashing action figures together in various crossover films. When the fascination with these gothic ghoulies started to wane a decade later, so did the concept of mixing and matching each property. Fast forwarding quite a bit to the mid-2000s, Marvel had signed on with Universal for them to produce Hulk and Hulk-related projects until the concept of the MCU started to kick off, but were eventually cut out of the deal altogether when the House of Mouse did what they do best, which is buying shit. So, while they went on to hitherto unheard of success, Universal would need to make do with what they had left, which, outside of making progressively worse Jurassic Park films and the Wild Speed franchise, wasn't all that much. So, to bolster their stable of franchises, they looked to the past to see what they already owned and could shoehorn into another universe. And lo and behold, they remembered they owned a bunch of weirdo monsters. Now, just to specify, they obviously did not own the concept of vampires, mummies, or werewolves, just certain names and characters. But since the studio had always been closely associated with said creatures, well, that was good enough. Now, Universal had already tried resurrecting a number of these characters with various reboots, like for the Wolfman or Dracula, which if you've seen, won't be surprised to know they fell far short of big comebacks. In fact, 2010's Wolfman, for a time, was going to be the start of this shared universe, but at the last minute, Universal wanted to wait it out to see how Marvel's gamble would pay off. So, Dracula Untold was then set to be the official jumping off point, but those plans were kiboshed when the critical reception to that film came back as a bit tepid, or tepeshed. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. So, with those two failures behind them, and both of them being set in the past, Universal decided to adopt a more modern, contemporary style, and just to rip off Marvel's approach wholesale. The then logical course of action was to lean on the name of their most successful series of monster flicks, the Academy Academy Award-winning Mummy Trilogy, starring everyone's favorite himbo, Rick O'Connell. Oh, I hate mummies. But this new reboot of the re reboot needed to be more sophisticated, more cutting edge, darker, and sexier. But that begs the question, how can you be sexier? 
than this! Well, you can't, so they just hired Tom Cruise and Russell Crowe instead. Cruise was cast as a protagonist named... I, I, don't, I don't know what... what, what was, uh, Tom Cruise. He was cast as Tom Cruise, while Russell Crowe stepped into the tailored suit of Jekyll, aka Mr. Hyde. He was also to be the head of Prodigium, a very, surprise, surprise, shield slash monarch type of organization whose job it was to protect the world against the supernatural horrors that plague it. The one of most immediate concern was Amanet, a female mummy played by Sophia Butella. The person put at the head of all this was Alex Kurtzman, who both produced, directed, and helped draft up the general story. Not familiar with Kurtzman? Well, let me refresh your memory! <laughs> Now, regardless of the creatives directly involved, the problem was that this reboot didn't exactly endear itself with fans of the classic Universal Monster lineup or even the fans of the O'Connell trilogy. Right off the bat, it looked really similar to many other Tom Cruise action films, which when you try to shove in supernatural elements, just feels really off. I mean, sure, the dude played a vampire once, kinda, but by and large, his films have been grounded in reality. Well, most of them. It was also unclear to mainstream moviegoers exactly what this new movie was. A, a remake, a reboot, a brand new thing? If anything, it harkened back to previous failed attempts to modernize these characters, like uh, Dracula 2000, anyone? God, I can't believe I just remembered that. But this is where things get interesting. Kinda. Mere weeks before The Mummy 2017 shambled into theaters, Universal opened the Trojan Horse, posting a mysterious photo on social media revealing a lineup of notable actors, including Cruz, Crow, Butella, but also Javier Bardem and Johnny Depp, with the hashtag Dark Universe displayed very prominently. Yeah, that's, that's the photo. They totally look like they're all there and not clumsily photoshopped in, don't they? Anyway, this was their big coming out party for a glut of projects that they had stewing, with the prodigium factoring into most, if not all of them. Javier Bardem was set to appear as Victor Frankenstein's monster, while Johnny Depp would be seen, or not, as the Invisible Man. Alex Kurtzman was heading up a writer's room, whose task it was to explore just how dark this universe could get. Now, while many of you might be familiar with this photo, it only alluded to two other films, whereas there were still many, many, many more being tossed around. These included, but were not limited to, Renfield, Dark Army, The Invisible Woman, Monster Mash, Van Helsing, no, no, another Van Helsing, Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Wolfman, starring Rock the Dwayne Johnson, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, The Phantom of the Opera, Invisible Man 2, you didn't even make Invisible Man, another Dracula, which Luke Evans apparently campaigned to return to the role, and finally, a remake of the Scorpion King, and no, I'm not kidding. Why? Now, unlike Marvel, which launched the productions of Hulk, Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America simultaneously, Universal had done very little work on these future films, and at least had the foresight to wait for the Mummy's box office receipts before they fully committed. They still, however, obviously couldn't resist showing their hand a bit too early with that cast photo. No doubt, this was a move used to drum up more hype. That hype, of course, was softened somewhat by the infamous trailer that was uploaded to YouTube with an incomplete sound mix. While I can't say this actively hurt the film's chances, I can't imagine it helped much. Uh.
What also didn't help was the finished film, a dull, generic action thriller with a few supernatural elements kinda mixed in. While it's not some outright Battlefield Earth-style disaster, oh god no, it also wasn't terribly exciting or memorable. This then of course translated into poor reviews, which then of course translated into poorer domestic box office results. Universal also shot themselves in the foot by unleashing the mummy just one week after the original Wonder Woman, which wound up grossing close to a billion dollars worldwide over a long tail. So Diana definitely lassoed some profits away from Mr. Cruz. Speaking of money, on a budget of 125 million, that's before marketing costs, the mummy was only able to unearth 80 million in North America, which is not very good. But here's the thing, in the last decade, movies became a more global business, and worldwide, it actually wrapped up $407 million total, far from a failure. Unfortunately, Hollywood still tends to place a lot of importance on domestic halls, and with that being so embarrassingly low, they decided to just cut the cord anyway. And in my estimation, they weren't exactly wrong to do it, putting the hopes and or dreams of an entire cinematic universe on its wobbly shoulders was ill-advised, with its reviews being so lukewarm and its North American commercial performance being quite the pittance. Universal figured they'd only see diminishing returns from then on out if they pushed forward with the rest of the universe, especially since, in terms of theatrical familiarity, The Mummy had the most brand recognition. So, those are the cold hard facts, but we're not done, because shortly after the film's debut, Variety reported on claims that Tom Cruise had been given a massive amount of control during filming, often asking for rewrites, criticizing Alex Kurtzman on his directing, and generally shaping the film to his liking. I'm not interested in that at all. Ah! This was in contrast with the first draft of the script, which allegedly focused more on the supernatural elements, but this has never been confirmed. Universal were quick to deny these allegations in a kind of nothing statement released that same week. Tom approaches every project with a level of commitment and dedication that is unmatched by most working in our business today. He has been a true partner and creative collaborator, and his goal with any project he works on is to provide audiences with a truly cinematic movie-going experience. Now, it should be noted that Cruz's other films from around that time, like Edge of Tomorrow or Jack Reacher, did not have these same allegations allegations lobbied against them, so we'll need to file this under the he said, she said bullshit rule for now. Now despite all that, the finished film just didn't inspire enough confidence to expand the scope of the universe, and just a few months later, that very November, Alex Kurtzman stepped down from his role in the writer's room and washed his hands of the whole thing. While his public statement was pretty vague, you can definitely tell that some type of interference hampered the film's production. The Mummy wasn't what I wanted it to be. I'm no longer involved in that and have no idea what's going on with it. I look back on it now, and what felt painful at the time ended up being an incredible blessing for me. I learned that I need to follow my own instincts, and when I can't fully do that, I don't think I can succeed. Those films are beautiful because the monsters are broken characters and we see ourselves in them. I hope those are the movies that they make. I want to see them. Now, in the few months between the movies debut and Kurtzman stepping down, there had been some movement on getting some of the other projects off the ground, with Angelina Jolie having been approached to play the Bride of Frankenstein. But when Kurtzman stepped down, the whole thing went down with him. Since then, he has yet to return to motion pictures, and has instead focused on producing the recent glut of Star Trek TV projects, which also have seen divisive reactions. Looking at things today, the official Dark Universe Twitter has only two posts, which are now both four years old, so it's pretty clear that the idea of an interconnected series of films is dead. But that doesn't mean Universal has given up entirely. 2020's The Invisible Man proved to be far more successful as a standalone project, ditching Johnny Depp, going with smaller actors in scope, and putting a more stalkerish spin on the source material. It wound up making $172 million on a mere budget of $6 
seven, proving that spending a massive amount of money is not a surefire way to a film's success. You just need to let the director be creative. And also, there's The Mummy Demastered, a pretty solid game by way forward, so it's not a total loss. Perhaps though, the greatest tragedy of all of this is that the Dark Universe could have been very different, and while I can't say for sure it would have been better, actually I can. Back in 2007, Universal had offered Guillermo del Toro a chance to remake Frankenstein, one of his favorite all-time stories, and was going to give him carte blanche to do it his way. Abe Sapien himself, Doug Jones, was even in talks to don the neck bolts. However, negotiations went poorly and Del Toro eventually walked away. While the exact reasoning isn't known, lots of theories suggest that if successful, Universal then wanted Del Toro to oversee or produce every other film that would follow, even if they didn't involve Frankenstein or his monster. He would become their own Kevin Feige. Del Toro most likely didn't want to be tied down to just one studio or not be able to pursue outside projects, so he declined the offer. But again, none of this has been confirmed. What Del Toro did offer when it was revealed that the Dark Universe had kind of sputtered and broke down was regret. I've said no to things that are enormous, and I've never looked back. The only time I repent I didn't do something was in 2007, when Universal, in an incredibly gentle and beautiful manner, said, do you want to take over the monster universe? And they gave me the reins of several properties, and I didn't do it. That I repent. So this is a confessional moment. I repent. That's the only thing. Wow, that's super depressing. Um, when you step back and look at everything that went wrong with this whole project, plan, universe, whatever you want to call it, well, it really starts to feel like it was jinxed or hexed or maybe even cursed. What is it with you and curses? Yeah, I'm happy without a good curse. This is cursed. That is cursed. Give it a rest, will ya? If you know of any other dusty, devastated developments in the video game or movie industry, let me know in the comments below, over on my Twitter, or shamble on over to the Flaphouse VIP Patreon and become a big boss to nominate what I'll be taking on in the future. Also, massive shoutouts to Morales for suggesting the Dark Universe. See you next time, and thanks for watching.